Welcome along to Snetterton for the final rounds of the 2017 Radical SR1 Cup Championship. Ideal conditions, a slight breeze but beautiful sunshine. And for Jerome de Sadlier and James Pinkerton, they are the two drivers that will fight it out for the crown. Let's catch up with them before qualifying got underway. Yeah, I know definitely I'm going to push quite hard, make sure I follow the track limits and try to do a good job. And you can win it in this first race? It's possible. It'll, it might be tough, but uh, we're going to try. I could. So you've got to really stay in touch with Jerome, have you, for this first race? I have. I don't think it's going to be easy, but I'll try my best. Um, I've had the best out of the tyres at Donington, so we'll have to do the best we can. Jerome's always very fast, so he won't make it easy. Back at what happened in the qualifying session for the Radical SR1 Cup Championship. A qualifying session which would see the drivers' fastest times dictate the grid for the first race of the weekend and their second fastest times would dictate the grid for race number two of the weekend. So an important qualifying session for both number three, Jerome de Sadlier, who led the championship coming into the Snetterton weekend on 38 points. And well, for the number 22 car of James Pinkerton, he would be hoping to set pole position time, start on the front row of the grid and, of course, gain the extra championship point that would be available for each of those races if you set the pole position time. So Jerome de Sadlier set the pace early on in the session, looking to try and see what he could do. James Pinkerton, though, got out onto track and straight away popped in some very quick times in the qualifying session. And, well, he was then a driver that was happy with the times early on in the session and opted to come into the pit lane, sit out the rest of the session just to see as to whether Jerome de Sadlier was able to do anything about what, for him, was the quickest time in the session. It can be a dangerous game just sitting patiently in the pit lane with your eyes peeled to the screen and seeing whether anybody could improve their times. And that's exactly what Jerome de Sadlier was continuing to try and do out on circuit. Yeah, James has just he's done his, uh, his laps in qualifying, just uh, trying to hold on to the tyres. So they do go off quite a lot. So he's just trying to keep them as fresh as he can, ready for race one and two. So, But his teammate's coming after him at the moment and, uh, and he's, he's now six tenths behind. So he's getting close. It got very close towards the end of the session, but it was the right call for James Pinkerton, ultimately. He sat out the vast majority of the qualifying session, having posted the fast laps early on, and it was good enough to start from pole position for the first race of the weekend. Quickest number 48, and the Chittenden. That looked uh, pretty risky driver. sitting there. Uh, it was probably, I was just trying to save the tyres. So I'm not sure how good my second fastest lap was, so I think that might set me back a bit in the second race, but I'm really happy with that. So. No, I thought I'd be a little quicker, to be honest. Uh, I know that's my, my rear tires are, are pretty used, but I still thought I'd get away with it. Fourth is really not where I guess I want to be, but uh, I'll be pushing in the race to make up some, uh, some places. Are those the tires for the race, or can you change them? Uh, I've got some other tires for the race. They're not new, but uh, they're better than this. Also amongst the entry list at Snetterton was motorsport news journalist Rod Labrook, who was driving the recently launched Gen 2 Radical SR1, a car entirely different to the car that he regularly races, which is a Puma in the Dunlop Puma Cup. So Rob, first time out qualifying, how was that? Uh, fast. It's a bit different from a Ford Puma. Um, round here is just the corner entry speed you have to carry, particularly for Turn 1, the bomb hole and Coram. It's, um, yeah, it's quite phenomenal when you're literally breathing on the brake, coming down one gear and then getting straight back on it right the way round Turn 1. Um, yeah, car felt mega, so I only drove it for about an hour on Friday, so I'm still learning it and learning this kind of racing with aero. Um, but I'm just getting to that point where you can you can trust it, you know what the car's going to do. So let's have a look at the grid for the first race of the weekend then. James Pinkerton on pole position, Christian Jeffrey alongside. Row two is Andy Chittenden and championship leader Jerome de Sadlier. It's Rob Courtnidge and Andrew Ritchie on row three with Nigel Payne and Rob Ladbrook on row four. And on the fifth row of the grid is Peter Devlin for this penultimate race of the season. Championships to be decided this weekend. James Pinkerton sits on pole position. Red lights are on. Red lights go out. And the number 22 car goes absolutely nowhere when the lights go out. Rob Courtney just is able to squeeze his way through and past the stricken pole sitter's car. And Christian Jeffrey will lead as they head up towards Richie's corner for the first time. And Jerome de Sadley has slotted himself through into second position by the look of things. And well, now for James Pinkerton, if he can't get going, that is going to put Jerome de Sadley, who we ride on board with, in a very handsome position in terms of his championship aspirations as he chases down Christian Jeffrey round through Wilson Corner for the first time. 
and already the front two are just starting to break away a little bit. Christian Jeffrey, however, is a guest in the championship this weekend. We regularly see him racing in the Radical Challenge, the man who's based out in the Caribbean, and he's not eligible for championship points. So even though Jerome de Sadlier is in second place, he would gain maximum championship points. And for poor old James Pinkerton, his car just went nowhere when the lights went out. Andy Chitterton is through into third position. Fourth place is Rob Courtnage. He was just able to squeeze his way through a past the stricken car of James Pinkerton when the lights went out. But it is going to be Christian Jeffrey that is pulling away in the lead of the race as they head through Oggies for the first time. With the championship leader, Jerome de Sadlia, sitting right on his coattails in second place. Andy Chitterton has got his sleeves rolled up and fights it out with Rob Courtnage for what is third and fourth place. The fifth place car is just that little bit further back as they work their way out of Williams and onto the Bentley Strait for the first time. James Pinkerton has not got going by the look of things, which that now means that all Jerome Sadlier really needs to do is finish this race. It almost doesn't matter where he finishes, as long as he posts a finish and is classified in the results, he will be the champion for this year. But ideally, he wants to try and take the race victory. Fantastic low camera angle as we ride on board briefly with the car that's there in second place, trying to hunt down Christian Jeffrey. Three cars now for third, fourth and fifth place because it looks as though Andrew Ritchie is trying to join in as well as they thread their way through Coram for the first time and then in towards the braking area for the left-hander at Murray's that concludes the lap here at Snetterton. So through the right-hander, then through the left-hander, accelerate their way onto the centre straight. Andy Chitterton having to still work terribly hard to keep Rob Courtnidge at bay. Andrew Ritchie in fifth place is not too far away as well. And of course, all of these cars identical as well, all running on Dunlop tyres, all powered by the 1340cc RPE-tuned Suzuki engine. And what a fight it is. As Rob Courtney, is he going to squeeze his way up the inside of Andy Chitterton? Yes, he does at Richie's corner. So up to third comes Rob Courtney. Down to fourth goes Andy Chitterton. He's got another car looking to try and attack. And that is Andrew Rich as they head up towards the braking area for Wilson. They're side by side for fourth and fifth. And the place is gained by Andrew Ritchie. Two places lost there in the space of a couple of corners for poor old Andy Chittenden driver who we also see out racing regularly in his Radical SR1 in the Radical Challenge in the UK. So through the left-hander at Palmer, the leading pair starting to ever stretch the gap between themselves and the trio behind, with Christian Jeffrey making his debut in the Radical SR1 Cup, still out front and leading the race. Largely because these three behind are slowing each other up at the moment, such an enjoyable battle they're all having. And as they work their way up towards Hamilton, Keep an eye towards Nigel Payne, who, at the wheel of his light green and black car, is beginning to close in on the little trio ahead as a result of their squabbling, holding each other up. They threw the right-hander at Oggies, up towards the right-hander at Williams that will bring them onto the Bentley straight yet again. And it just looks as though these three now have settled in a little bit more now with Rob Courtnage still under pressure from Andrew Ritchie. But Andrew Ritchie's just not close enough, really, is he? Leading pair still pretty much tied together. Still with Christian Jeffrey leading the race. Jerome de Sadlier not too far away, but not picking up enough of a toe down the Bentley straight so as to close in. Then it's Rob Courtnage from Andrew Ritchie from Andy Chittenden and the ever-closing light green and black car of Nigel Payne. Keep your eye towards him because he's not that far away. You can see those three cars and then Nigel Payne just in the distance of the shot as they flick their way through the right-hander at the bomb hole and up towards the never-ending right-hander at Corum yet again. One of those corners that Rob Ladbrook was referring to after qualifying, the cornering speed that you can maintain in these Radical SR1s on their treaded Dunlop tyres, absolutely astonishing. Onto the brakes, through the left-hander at Murray's, they accelerate their way onto the centre straight to conclude yet another lap. It's another lap that guest driver, not eligible for championship points, Christian Jeffrey, continues to lead, whilst James Pinkerton is a rather frustrated spectator from the pit wall there. He can see his championship hopes ever, ever evaporating because he knows he'll have done the maths already. As long as Jerome de Sadlia maintains second place, but is behind a driver who is not eligible to score championship points, well, that's it, absolutely. There is no hope for James Pinkerton. The championship will be gone at race one of the weekend, but he will come out, I'm sure, fighting for race two of the weekend, where he will again start from pole position because he did ultimately secure pole for both race one and for race two. So the championship gap is 36 points coming into this race. And at the moment, Jerome de Sadlia, albeit second on the road, would be on for maximum championship points. That would be 40. There is also one additional championship point for the fastest lap in each race. Now, the fastest lap so far has been posted by Christian Jeffrey, but again, he's not eligible to pick up that championship point. So that point would also go the way of Jerome de Sadlier, who may not be aware that James Pinkerton didn't even get going when the lights went out. It was a broken chain, ultimately, we've been hearing for the hugely unfortunate James Pinkerton. So Jerome de Sadlier will keep pressing on, perhaps in the blissful ignorance that his main championship rival is now out of the race. We ride on board with Rob Ladbrook, 
who's looking to try and work his way through past Peter Devlin, who runs a little bit wide. That's at Agostini and at the wheel of the Gen 2 Radical SR. What a car that was recently launched at Rockingham earlier on this season. He has gone through now to pick up what would be seventh position. And Peter Devlin drops down into eighth place. Third, fourth and fifth place are down at the bottom of the Bentley Strait at the moment. Rob Courtney's looking ever more secure now in third place. The white car with the red flashes is Andrew Ritchie in fourth place. The white car with the red flashes, but a few more of them, a bit more red coloration, is Andy Chittenden. He's still within touching distance of Andrew Ritchie as they thread their way through the right-hander at Coreham. You then need to get the car braking in a straight line before you turn into the left-hander at Murray. So it's a very difficult corner at the exit of Coreham and up towards the entry to Murray's corner. And well, any mistake at all from Andrew Ritchie and Andy Chittenden is in prime position. He ideally needs to close up by another four or five car lengths so if he wants to try and mount a real challenge on the car ahead. This is the new Gen 2 Radical SR1 in the hands of Motorsport News journalist Rob Ladbrook who has been getting quicker and quicker and quicker as the race weekend wears on. Rob, who's been racing in the Dunlop Puma Cup in his Ford Puma throughout the course of this season, is sampling the Radical SR1 for the first time. And every time he's got out of the car, there is the most enormous grin on Rob Ladbrook's face, who is thoroughly enjoying his weekend here at Snetterton. And looking forward to seeing more of these Gen 2 cars coming out over the course of the 2018 season. We are now on the last lap, though, which means that for Jerome de Sadly, he might be second on the road, but he's now less than a lap away from being crowned the 2017 Radical SR1 Cup champion. And it looks as though the battle for fourth and fifth isn't fully resolved yet either. Andrew Ritchie has been caught by Andy Chittenden over the course of the last lap or so. So the amount of daylight ever diminishing between the pair of them. They flick their way through the left-hander at Hamilton. And the best bet for Andy Chittenden, if he wants to mount a challenge to retake fourth place, having lost it a few laps ago, is to get a good exit out of Oggies, a good exit out of the next right-hander coming up, which is Williams. And that will bring them onto the Bentley straight. And if he's close enough, he might pick up a toe from the car ahead. He's just that little bit too far away, though, as they head onto the Bentley straight for the final time. And this is our race leader at the wheel of another one of the Gen 2 Radical SR1s. It looks so Christian Jeffrey making his debut in this championship not running for championship points he's going to come through and claim an overall victory not a bad start to his weekend of sr1 cup racing so through quorum and through murray's for the final time christian jeffrey is going to win the race but it looks so jerome de sadlia the man at the wheel of the number three car is going to win the championship checkered flag flies and it is a win for christian jeffrey he comes through and claims top honors and wins the penultimate race of the season in the Radical SR1 Cup. But Jerome de Sadlier, you can see by his reaction, he knows he is the 2017 champion. Ideally, I'm sure he would have loved to have gone wheel to wheel with James Pinkerton. But that failure of the chain on the start for James Pinkerton means that Jerome de Sadlier, with one race still to go in the championship, will be the 2017 Radical SR1 Cup champion. So confirmation of the results then. Christian Jeffrey claims the win with Jerome de Sadlier, the champion, in second place. Rob Courtnidge is there in third, head of Andrew Ritchie, Andy Chittenden, Nigel Payne, Rob Ladbrook and Peter Devlin, who finished in eighth position. So some delightful scenes in Park Ferme as our new champion, Jerome de Sadlier, receives the congratulations of team members and fellow competitors as well. Christian Jeffrey will head to the top step of the podium, but let's hear from the new champion, also gauge Rob Ladbrook's thoughts podium. on his first SR1 race. Yeah, on top With their top, bottle of bubbly all squeezing in together to... Uh... Very pleased. Uh, listen, the Team 360 Racing did an amazing job at prepping the car. We did quite a few days before the championship. The goal was always to win it. Um, and so I did, and I'm very excited. I'm, uh, you know, James Pinkerton was close enough to, to be, uh, you know, to, to challenge me. Unfortunately, he had a mechanical failure, so I feel bad for him, but, but I'm very happy. First race in SR1, how was it? Uh, it was really good when I got it going. Um, the line, <laughs> getting these things off the line, I've never tried it, never practiced it or anything. Um, and my foot got caught between the clutch and the footrest, and when it came up, it just bogged down so I lost a few seconds then that fired me up I like to think um, and from then on it was actually brilliant it was great um, I managed to catch another car make up a couple of places I'm really sorry for Pinky who snapped his chain off the start he deserved a bit more than that but um, times are coming down as well so I ended up just about three seconds off the fastest lap of the weekend against guys that have been racing all year and I've done about two hours in the car now so shows how accessible they are if nothing else well, that's it for race one. The championship is decided, but race two is still to come from Snetterton.